that I often find myself saying when I'm running workshops or working with clients is about flexibility and the fact that pushing in the direction you want to go is the slowest and most dangerous way of getting there. And I wanted to do a little bit of an explanation about why this is the case and what we can do instead. So if we're thinking about, I want to get more flexible hamstrings and we're thinking, great, I'll take my leg up. And a lot of people will just stretch in this position. Some people, this will work well for, but a lot of people find that they get stuck at a certain spot or it doesn't feel nice, or it just won't go, or if they do work on it, then the next day, it's not as good as it was. So I wanted to explain a little bit about how flexibility works and how we can be a little more intelligent about working with our bodies. So usually what I say is that I use traditional stretches as tests rather than exercises. So yes, we will do a straight leg raise, but we'll say, okay, what do you feel here? So if I take 10 students and I test them, even if they're at the same range, they will most likely feel it in slightly different places. So one person may feel it pulling up into their calf. One may feel it really hard to keep their knees straight and are pulling behind the knee. One may feel it in the muscle bulk in their hamstring. Somebody may feel it right up on their sitting bone. Some may feel it up into their back and some may even feel tingling down into their feet. So what is right for each of those people is actually completely different. And for all but one of them, stretching in this position will actually make it worse. So we want to have a think about all of the structures that are involved when we're moving our bodies around. The muscles are the last things I work on. When we go through our flexibility intensive, we look at the order. I always address the breath first. Then we look to see if there are any bone or joint restrictions blocking it. Then we pay respect to the nerves. Are any nerves getting stretched or pulled or caught or tight? Then the fascia, then the muscles. And we work on very um, explicit ways of helping to unravel each of these so that we can get deeper and deeper in the ranges that we want to go, but in a far more clever way without damaging any of the tissues. So an example would be, if we try to take this up and we're feeling compression in the front of the hips, pushing into that direction will make it worse, yeah? Something's getting squashed, if you push it more, it'll get more inflamed, it'll take up more space, it'll get more compressed. So if you're feeling compression on the closing side of a joint, please don't push into it. If we're thinking more about the nerves, when you take the leg into position, you'll usually feel a line of pull or a tightness in the back of the knee or a pulling down deep into the calf. Some people feel little electrical sensations down or even up or down into the foot. And some people will just notice a, a little bit of a lagging ache, even one to two hours afterwards. This is called latent pain and it's what happens when a nerve gets stretched. Nerves don't like to be stretched. They're designed to slide. So when we're working on mobilizing the nerves, we need to find exactly where there is a point of restriction release that point of restriction so that the nervous system can slide. Think of it more like a piece of dental floss or something like that, rather than a piece of elastic. Then we move to fascia, which is the amazing multi-dimensional connective tissue that connects everything to everything. But sometimes in certain areas, it can get a little bound up. Again, it doesn't really like strong static stretching. If you pull it too hard, it contracts itself and it, it holds more. We need to work with it very softly, very smoothly, very dynamically, and also look at why it's building up tension there in the first place. Then once we've cleared out the fascial component, then we can actually work in sitting in muscular stretches. It's not that I don't ever use a muscle stretch. Yes, we do, when the muscle is the issue. And I also want to raise a caution in that sitting in a stretch anything longer than 30 seconds will actually make that muscle not be able to work at its full capacity for about half an hour afterwards. Early research in this was done in the mid 90s and has been repeated many, many times. So if you're doing long stretches, make sure they're at the end of the day when you're not going to be dancing afterwards. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more information about the need for feeling into a stretch and use it as a test. What is stopping me from going further? And how clever can I be about unraveling the restriction before I try it again, rather than just trying to push myself further?